Okay, so this is a video that I did not think that I was going to have to do, that I don't necessarily want to do, but I feel that I need to do it because of some obvious reasons that you'll see here later in the video. I was actually in the process of getting ready to do a video on what an evangelist is, and that video will be coming out today or early tomorrow since I am leaving for New York uh, to see family up there. And I have like 10 to 12 tabs open that I don't I don't want to just save the folders. So that video will be coming out. And in fact, that is a, the video that I was about to record. But, you know, I just went on Twitter. I, I don't go on Twitter very often, if ever, really. Um, but I do follow uh, Theodore's channel. And I know that Theodore is going to be watching this video. And... Uh, I've actually shared some of the, I mirrored some of the videos that he has put out about the Trinity, which are great videos. Um, and I've listened to what he's had to say about Kent Hovind and everything and how Hovind is running like a call out there. Although I do believe that Kent Hovind is saved. Um, Kent Hovind is into some serious stuff. So this uh, Lies of the Devil channel is run by... Uh, a guy by the name of Theodore, and he is somebody, again, who was heavily involved with Kent Hovind's ministry out in Pensacola, which is now located in Alabama. Um, but I go on YouTube, and or not YouTube, I go on Twitter, and a lot of the time, because I don't follow many people, I see his stuff pop up where it says that he added a video to a playlist and he adds a lot of my videos so he supports me you know Pastor Anderson is preaching a false gospel of works uh, that was what yesterday or two days ago yeah two days ago that was the last video that I put out um, so all steadfast Catholic Church you know he um, a message to steadfast Baptist Church Don Romero steps down as pastor. So he supports my channel, although after this video, I'm sure that he won't. But, you know, that's why it's a little bit harder for me to, you know, expose somebody who is giving me support. But, you know, the Bible says reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. The Bible says preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. So I'm not a respecter of persons. Um... I do not know if Theodore is saved. I will go out on a limb and say that. However, what he is the the videos that he is liking and the videos that he is adding from the people that made these videos makes me very suspicious of this guy. Now, he posted he added a video a couple of weeks ago and the guy was totally teaching works he said that Steven Anderson has a incorrect version of repentance now if anybody out there has watched my channel for any length of time you know that I don't agree with Steven Anderson on anything um, except for the gospel that he used to preach um, Anderson's definition of repentance is one of those things. Stephen Anderson is correct when it comes to repentance. 100% correct. So anybody who would say that Anderson is wrong about repentance, what they're saying is that you have to turn from your sins to be saved. That's, that's what that's key word for. And if you always listen longer, you can tell that that's exactly what they're implying. So without further ado, um, I'm just going to show you this guy right here um, so January 10th this was two days ago I added a video to a YouTube playlist Steven Anderson false antichrist pastor now Anderson's a lot of things but I would not call him an antichrist pastor even though he is teaching blasphemous doctrine uh, against Christ deity but coincidentally enough if you click on this video to have it open here, Stephen Anderson, false antichrist pastor. It's from a channel called Seventh Day Anabaptists, and this guy, I'm not even going to listen to this video. This guy makes me sick. I hope he dies and slips into hell tomorrow, 
and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll show you exactly why. Let's look at some of his videos that he has here. Is Jesus God? Streamed one week ago. I'll give you a hint. He doesn't believe that Jesus is God. He completely denies the deity of Christ. Um, and then he goes down here and I, I don't know he's trying to talk all spiritual but obviously he doesn't have the spirit of God he has no idea what he's talking about but let's I guess we'll just listen to this video hey everybody how you guys doing today and the question I'm about to ask is Jesus God and <clears throat> this is the thing um, we have to be honest with ourselves and love the truth. And unfortunately, many people, when asked this question, or when pondering the question whether or not Jesus is God, the first thing they do is go back to creeds, the creeds of men, whether it's the Nicene Creed, the um, Augustinian Creed, or what is it? <clears throat> yeah, the Creed of Augustine. Athanasian Creed, I'm sorry, not Augustine's Creed. The Athanasian Creed. Or they go to their pastor, they go to their seminary uh, teachers, and then to, to them they have a lot to lose by admitting what um, many, many people are coming to the realization of, which is the fact that Jesus is not God. Jesus is categorically identified in the scriptures as the Son of God. Now, contrary to what your pastor is going to teach from a Baptist, Methodist church, Catholic church, Orthodox, etc., the title and phrase Son of God doesn't mean you're God. That's nowhere taught in the Bible. But if we understand the Old Testament and the prophecies about the coming Messiah, we understand that the title Son of God, the anointing, we see this of God. Uh, Psalm chapter 2, although we know it's... I don't know why it's all choppy. Um, I don't think that's my internet because I'm looking down here and it's moving along slowly. Uh, it's So it's, it's all choppy for some reason. Um, about the Messiah, Jehoshua, it's immediately... Yeah, I don't know who Jehoshua is. The Messiah's name is Jesus. Um, so, uh, another name could be Joshua, you know, because Joshua from the Old Testament is quoted in the New Testament as Jesus. But you're not ultra spiritual because you can name a name that, oh, this is, this is the Hebrew name. Well, if you're going to use anything, it's Joshua. So, um,. Anyway, the guy was flat out saying that Jesus is categorically defined in the New Testament as the Son of God, and he is. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Um, in fact, let me pull this verse up. So in Luke 135, it says, the, And the angel answered and said unto her, talking to Mary, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The reason why Jesus is called the Son of God is because he was born of a woman. Jesus was a man. However, according to the Spirit, Jesus is God. It says in John 8, 50, um Okay, let me go back one verse here. He said, Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? They're like, You're not even fifty, let alone a thousand years old. Abraham died over a thousand years ago. How are you going to say that you've seen Abraham? And in verse 58 it says, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. That is the same thing that God said to Moses out of the burning bush in Exodus 3. I am that I am. Thus shalt thou say unto them, I am hath sent me unto you. Jesus is the very same God of Exodus 3. But this guy doesn't believe it. And this guy 
Seventh day Anabaptist, this false prophet devil, is somebody who's being promoted by a channel called Lies of the Devil. And he's promoting the lies of the devil. So I don't understand um, how, I don't understand how that's going on. So, and then, yeah, everybody. this guy God again. Bless you today. False Antichrist is... pastor. And I don't care what you have to say. I don't care about your opinion on spiritual matters. You're spiritually in darkness. You don't know the gospel. You aren't saved. And this is, you know, this isn't an isolated incident for, for Theo. He also shares videos where people talk about um, repenting from your sins to be saved, which is work salvation. Um, I don't know where that one... Okay, right here is, Is Donnie Romero a Christian? And it's this guy. So, this is on January 8th. This is four days ago. I'm making this video on Saturday, January 12th. This was made last Tuesday, or rather it was added to the playlist on Tuesday. And the title of the video is, Is Donnie Romero a Christian? Now, I didn't even watch this video until I read down here. It says, Anchored Alliance Evangelism is a YouTube channel that seeks to refute false doctrine, such as easy believism, which he couldn't even spell right, once saved, always saved, Catholic doctrine, Greek Orthodox doctrine, and KJV OSAS Baptist doctrine. We seek to promote true repentance as having a true heart change to turn from sin and follow Jesus Christ. That is works salvation. And this guy is attacking the the word of God, the King James Bible, the only pure English translation that we have. And once saved, always saved, which is such a silly statement because you don't need these three other words. If you're saved... That means that because of an event in your past, it's done. Saved is a past tense statement of an event in the past. If you are saved, that means that something happened in your past that saved you. And obviously that is putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. The Bible is pretty clear about this. Um, let me just pull up a few scriptures. And of course this devil has to attack the King James Bible because there's no way that you can read a King James Bible and come away with the belief that repenting means turning from sin. Which doesn't even make sense because if, if turning away from sin, if repentance... If repentance means to turn away from sin, then the phrase repent of your sins is redundant because it would mean turn from your sins of your sins. This guy is a false prophet. He is a demon. He's a devil. He's straight out of hell. And listen to what he says. Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, thanks, everyone, for being here and checking this out. If you are a once saved, always saved believer, then you have an open invitation to have a live discussion with me. We can go ahead and just schedule that for whenever. I find that, however, most once saved, always saved believers, they kind of, you know, back out of these types of confrontations. Well, yeah, you're full of debate and deceit because you're a devil. But anyway, the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So according to this verse, when do you get everlasting life? Do you get it when you die or when you believe? You get it when you believe. It says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So if I have everlasting life right now, when does that end? When does my everlasting life end? It can't, because if my everlasting life ends and I die a spiritual death in hell, God lied, because he said that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It says in John 3.36, and notice it's the King James Version, it's not the ESV. 
the ESV and the NASB twist this scripture. It says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. In other translations, it, in other translations, it says, And he that believeth not the Son, or I'm sorry, it says, He that obeyeth not the Son. If it sounds like I have a lisp, uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I got like a canker sore on my tongue, so it's causing me issues, and I'm like salivating a little bit more. Uh, somebody commented on one of my videos and said, oh, you're smacking a lot. And this microphone is like super sensitive, so uh, sorry about that. There's not much I can really do about that. Um, the guy was really rude, but whatever. Anyway, moving forward, John 6:47 says, Verily, verily, I say unto he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So if you believe on Jesus Christ, at that moment that you put your faith in Christ, you have everlasting life at that moment. So if you have everlasting life from January 12th, 2019, you know, and you go to March 15th of 2050 and say you get into adultery and, you know, like Donnie Romero did and you're smoking weed and you're not going to church and you're just living a wicked life and all this other stuff. Excuse me. What um, what happens to your eternal life? Well, you can't just live any way you want and still go to heaven. Well, that's what people like him would say. Except for the fact that the Bible is very clear that he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. So, it doesn't matter what kind of sins you get into, your everlasting life cannot end. The Bible says... It says down here, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. See, there's a first death when your body dies, and there's a second death when your spirit is cast into hell forever, the lake of fire. And to get more technical, it's actually after the resurrection where your spirit and your body are brought back. And whoever's in hell comes out of hell, and then they're cast alive. Well, not alive. They're still dead. They're cast into the lake of fire for eternity. But if this is the second death, but you have everlasting life, if you suffer death, that means that life ended. But if it's everlasting, it can't end. Meaning that once you have everlasting life, it's forever. So once you are saved you're saved. Obviously, once saved, always saved, because if you're not saved, if, if look, if you're not always saved, then you were never saved. It's really that simple. It's just based on the definitions of those words. Once saved, always saved. Anybody who would attack that statement, forget the doctrine that's attached to that. Let's just attack it in the form of the English language, okay? If somebody is going to say that once you're saved, you're always saved is a false doctrine or that that statement can somehow be incorrect, they're an idiot. Because if you are saved from anything, whether it's hell, whether it's, you know, falling off a ladder, whether it's whatever, if you're saved from from suffering something, and then something happens later and you actually do suffer the thing which you were supposedly saved from, isn't that proof that you weren't actually saved from that something? Right. So if you're saved from something, in this case it's the penalty of and the wages of sin, which is death. If you're saved from that, it's done. You're saved. So by the very definition of the word saved... Once you are saved, yeah, you're always saved. Otherwise, you're not saved and you were never saved. So I hope that really wasn't confusing because at least to me it's not. Maybe the way I said it is. John 5.24 is by far my favorite verse in the whole Bible. Psalm 33.11 is a very close second. Uh, but John 5 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word. So you obviously have to hear the Bible. You have to hear the Word of God. That means the King James Version of the Bible, because if there's a translation error in your Bible, it's not the Word of God. It's that simple. 
if there is a contradiction in your Bible, if there is something that is incorrect in your Bible, it's not the Word of God. So you need a perfect Bible because the Word of God is God, according to 1 John 5, 7 and John 1, 1. It says, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. You cannot come into the condemnation to hell. Why? Because you have everlasting life. How? Because you believe on the the person who sent Jesus. Who is who? God. Right? You believe Jesus is God. How? By hearing God's word. Okay. So I cannot come into condemnation? How does that work? Well, it says, but is passed from death unto life. You were going to go to hell, but now you're passed from death. Now you're just, you know, it's just everlasting life. It's just life forever. You know, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Um, and when it comes to the definition of the word repent, I have a video on this. It's only 18 minutes. You're welcome to go and look at that. And I could probably leave a video in the back of this. And I'm not saying that, like, somebody... You know, lies of the devil, he could very well be saved and just not really understand these things. I don't know. I, I don't want somebody to be unsaved. But if he isn't saved, then I hope that he gets saved, at least from this video. Or if he is saved and he's maybe, you know, supporting people that he shouldn't be, you know, that he gets right on that. But, you know, it is my job. The Bible says to... Um, oh, hold on, let me, it says to, it says, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. So that's why I'm marking lies of the devil. And hopefully he does Romans sixteen seventeen, and he marks people like this and other people. But the very fact that this guy starts off attacking easy believism, once saved, always saved, and he attacks the King James Version of the Bible, and he supports it, makes me think that he's not saved. But I'm not going to be like these Andersonites, be like, oh, he's a reprobate. No, maybe he's just confused. Maybe he's just not saved yet. That's up to him and his heart, right? So if he recognizes like, okay, well, I do see what you're saying from the Bible there. And I guess what you're saying does make sense. So, yeah. You know, I understand that these people are in error, you know, let me, you know, let me look into this and whatever. And then hopefully he actually gets saved, you know, but if he hardens his neck and says, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he just wants to attack the gospel, then we're going to have issues. But you would think that having a channel like lies of the devil, that he would be interested in, what the devil's up to, and the devil is very much uh, supporting this guy's ministry, and that 291 subscribers will probably go up because people want to um, hear that their works can save them. Avoid Stephen Anderson and any NIFB member who tells you that God is okay with you living in willful and habitual sin. That's a railing accusation. Stephen Anderson, and for the, for the love of God, literally, please don't put me in a position where I have to defend Stephen Anderson. However, that is not a true statement. That is a, that is a lie. Now, Stephen Anderson will say that you can live any way you want and go to heaven. And that's 100% true, because salvation is of the Lord. It's not based on us. It's not based on how we live our life. If you think going to heaven is based on how you live your life, you're not going. It's the, Period. You are going to burn in hell if you think that you living a certain way determines whether or not you go to heaven or not. It's really that simple. But to say that they tell you that God's okay with sin, they've never said that. God is not okay with sin. God has destroyed entire cities because of sin. God was going to destroy all of his people and just leave Moses because of sin. God is not okay with sin. 
God will judge his people, but he's not going to send his people to hell. That's the difference. God will chasten and destroy the lives of Christians, born-again believers in Jesus Christ, if they continue in sin. But he's not going to send them to hell. That's the difference. This guy doesn't understand that. And anybody who supports this guy doesn't understand that. Okay. So there's those two videos, and there's a few other ones too. There was this one guy that looked like he was outside of like his garage or something. I don't know. I don't know where that video went. Maybe it's this one. So so yeah, anyway, it is so this video. It is denominations and movements, and why I am not going to. Go by the label of... Yeah, it's this video right here. ...of independent fundamental Baptists, and I don't think that you should either. Um, so so anyway, so recently the, the controversy with Jeff Durbin and, and uh, James White versus the Andersonites is, um, you know, the Ander, uh, Stephen Anderson and those crew are making some movie about um, Calvinism. Pretty sure it's called Calvinism Doctrine of Demons. And they yeah. got that coming soon, so they're they tried to stir up some controversy for some uh, it's good publicity for them to to get the word out for their film. All right, I don't want to listen to this guy. Let's just uh, come on. I don't want to go through the comments. No, it's in here. He mentions he talks about repentance. Come on. Okay, here we go. The big one. There's some clips from Anderson's crowd and it was it was pretty nasty how they were talking but uh, anyways so their attitude first of all was better so that came across better and then in addition to that and this is a big one their gospel is more correct than anderson's crowd so he's saying that a calvinist gospel that a calvinist gospel is more correct than anderson's gospel now listen Okay, if you don't know, Stephen Anderson and his crowd, they are against repentance. They're against evidences of salvation. Amen. To say that there must be evidences of salvation is works salvation. That's works salvation, buddy. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's a gift. It's completely free. And to say that there must be a, nece a necessary evidence, the only evidence you need is the f their fruit, the fruit of their lips, not the fruit of their Christian walk. The Bible says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is, G is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Um, now they read these verses and say, see, that person, you know, they're going to be burned with fire. Um, no, they're not. And I'll get to that in a second. It says, if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a word. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire. See, they see the fire and the burn and they say, see, that guy is going to be burned. I've, I've seen people like that demon scumbag Justin LeBlanc, straight out of hell, minister, child of Belial, say that Christians can go to hell. That is satanic. To the core. I mean, that's straight out of the mouth of the dragon. And let me just explain this, because I know when people see fiery or fire or burn, they get scared. But put your faith in God and trust the scriptures. It says, because it shall be revealed by fire. That What's that mean? It means that the day of the Lord is going to be revealed by fire. The Bible says that he's coming in the clouds and a, and a tempest is around about him. And, you know, that he's, there's, I mean, I just read it last night. I think it's like Psalm 20, Psalm 19, it's around there, where it says that, you know, there's going to be a fiery stream issued forth from his mouth and coals are going to be kindled by it. Uh, it says, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So the fire is trying the works. Not the people. 
It says, if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So, you know, Christ is the foundation. What is that? Uh, it means, you know, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, right? So you put all your faith and trust in the grace of God, the unmerited favor of Christ, which he shed for us when he died and rose again after living a perfect sinless life. He did all the hard work, and we trust that through his sacrifice, his sufficient sacrifice, that we are saved through his blood. That's the foundation. That's salvation. No matter what you do after that or before that, you can't go to hell because Jesus Christ has paid the penalty for sin. And, you know, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. However, you know, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, I'll just repeat it again and then I'll finish up with the next verse. It says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, that he hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay, we are saved to work, but we are not saved by works. Okay, and the Bible says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works that God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. It doesn't say that we will. So to say that there will be evidence of salvation and there will be works following salvation and if they aren't there, then it's proof that the salvation is not there. That is work salvation. That is Calvinism. That is Calvinism. And that is a false gospel. You're saying, well, works aren't attached to the front end, but they are attached to the back end. It's like when you buy a car and you say, oh, how much is this car? And they're like $4,000. Okay, total for everything? Yeah, everything, $4,000. And then you take it to, um, you know, you go to finance and they're like, hey, you know, it is $4,000, but you have to have this warranty on it. And that is going to be an extra $800. Yeah, but I was told it was four hundred, four thousand. No, like total, it's going to be four thousand eight hundred. Okay, salvation is a free gift, before, after, during, forever. It's a gift. So that is the foundation. But after that, God expects you to work. And it says, if any man's work shall be burned. Okay, number one, it says in verse fourteen, if any man's work abide. He shall receive a reward, right? So if you have gold, silver, and precious stones, the fire is not going to burn that up, you know. It's still going to be there. But if it's wood, hay, or stubble, it's going to be burned up. It says, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now, it doesn't mean that he's going to be burned. That just means that his works are going to be burned. His works are going to be burnt up, and but he himself shall be saved. He's going to be saved even though he has all of his works burned up, what does that mean? It means that he didn't do anything for Christ at all. There were no evidences of salvation, but he is still going to heaven. Why? Because he put his faith and his trust in Jesus Christ. And when it comes to repentance, uh, I didn't even touch on Jonah 3.10, but I will. It says, And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, Turning from your evil way is works, according to God. And in the same verse, it says, And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Evil in the Bible is just judgment or it's destruction. Evil is not always necessarily sin in the Bible. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Isaiah 45, 7. Uh, so turning from your evil way is works. Turning from your sin is works. And then God repented. If the word repent by itself means to turn from sin, then you're saying God turned from sin. That is blasphemy to say that God sins. That is blasphemy. He, he is pure light and in him is no darkness at all. He is God. And then down here in Matthew 21, it says, For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. Right? The way of righteousness is by what? Believing. 
It says, For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. See, you're in unbelief. The way of righteousness was preached unto you, and you did not repent that you might believe him, because you remained in your unbelief. Repent just means to turn or to change. And when it comes to the gospel, it is to change what you are trusting to get you to heaven. You need to repent from your trust in your dead works to trusting in the salvation that only God can provide, and he did provide at the cross. But these devils want to sit here and attack Anderson. Look, Anderson has to be can be attacked on other things. I mean, Anderson has gone in the way of Cain. But to say that Anderson's definition of repentance is incorrect is just simply false. In fact, go to Brother Elliot Ray's channel, and he mirrored um, the biblical version of repentance. I think Timotheus has it on his as well. Um, they have... Uh, great mirrored videos of Anderson back when he was being led by God. And it's clear, folks, repentance just means to turn or to change. And more often than not in the Bible, especially when it's talking about salvation, 100% of the time when it's talking about salvation, it's always talking about turning away from trusting in a false gospel. But what does this guy say? What is he saying? It's crowd. Okay, if you don't know, Steven Anderson and his crowd, they are against repentance, they're against evidences of salvation, and all these other types of things, and they preach what I consider a false gospel. Yeah, because you're a hellbound retard who's going to, I shouldn't have said retard, you're a hellbound heretic who's going to split hell open because you're not saved, buddy. It's really that simple. <clears throat> where was I going next? I think that that should basic. Oh yeah, that's actually what I was going to do. So Matthew seven, and this is exactly what they're thinking. And this is what they would probably comment. So I'm just going to cover this so that they don't have to comment this. It says, enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there at, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Now, if you're not using the King James Bible, It'll say, hard is the way. Here, in fact, let's let's go do that. Let's go Matthew 7 in the ESV. It says, enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Is it hard to drink water? Jesus compares drinking water to believing the gospel in John 4. He compares in John 6 the gospel to eating bread. He said, I am the bread which cometh down from heaven, that if any man eat thereof, he shall not die. Is it hard to eat bread? Is it hard to drink water? The, here you go again. This is a, a doctrinal issue stemming from the Bible translations. But what does it actually say? Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate. What does that mean? It's very narrow, and narrow is the way. Why? Because it is specific. It's narrow. It's just a straight line. It's just Jesus. It's not Jesus plus baptism. It's not Jesus plus turning from your sins. It's not Jesus plus showing an evidence of salvation. It's not Jesus plus anything or minus anything. It is Jesus alone. And narrow is the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, he said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's not me and your works. Okay, it's not what he said. It's Jesus alone, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And then he goes, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. Oh, yeah, you know, Anderson is evil. You know, you know I'm going to stand up against Stephen Anderson. 
you know, I'm standing up against Steven Anderson, so, you know, we're on the same page, we're on the same team. You know, Steven Anderson is bad, he's evil. Okay. They're in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. It says, ye shall know them by their fruits. And this is why I, I pulled this out. Because it says in verse 19, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That is talking about hell. And it says, wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Now, the question then is, what fruit? What is that fruit? Because it says fruit a lot. It says fruit in verse 16. It says ver fruit twice in verse 17. It says it twice in verse 18. And it says it once in 19 and once in 20. It says, ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. That is a fact. He's saying that if you have a, if you are a good tree, you will bring forth good fruit. Now, and it says, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. And they're saying, because Anderson is bringing forth evil fruit, that proves that he's a corrupt tree. Yeah, that's because you think that the fruit mentioned here is works. It's not works. It tells you what it is. In verse 18, it says, A good tree bringeth forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now, in John 15, it's, it's a parable where it says that, the, you know, and men gather them and they are cast into fire. That's just talking about the disposing of um, uh, branches. This is talking about the disposing of the tree. This is talking about somebody going to hell. But why are they going to hell? Because they're bringing forth bad fruit. Because if they were a good tree, they would bring forth good fruit. Therefore, what is that fruit? I already mentioned it earlier. It is the fruit of their lips. It's what are they saying? The Bible says, by thy words thou shalt be condemned, and by thy words thou shalt be justified. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, the Bible says. And you, you say, well, how do you know that? How do you know that? Well, because it says in verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me. Okay, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And here's another verse that they use. Oh, see, you got to do the will of the Father. Um, right, but what is the will of the Father? This is the work of God that you believe on him whom he has sent. And in John 6, verse 40, it says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up the last day. The will of the Father, and this is the Father's will, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. There's your once saved, always saved. There's your easy believism. It says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. So that's what you need to do. Just because you're calling him Lord, Lord, doesn't mean you're saved. Okay, this guy's calling Jesus Lord, but he's not saved. Why? Because he is believing in works, salvation. That's why. And in verse 22, it says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I knew you, but you kept living a life of sin. I knew you for a moment, but you never ended up getting baptized. Or, I knew you, but you know, you were just living a bad... No, it says, I never knew you. I never knew you. Why? Because if he knows you, he knows you. He's not going to forget you. I have written you on the palms of my hands, he says. He, but he said right here, I never knew you. And he says, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Why is he referring to them as workers of iniquity? Why is he commenting on the fact that, they are, that they're sinners? Because they haven't had their sins forgiven. Because they're being judged by their sins. Because that's what they want to be judged by. Look at verse 22. They're, say, they're not saying, hey, Lord, you know, you said that you died for me. You said that you died and rose again, God. You said that you died and paid the penalty for my sins. 
Why am I going to hell if you said that you, you paid for it for me? That's not what they're saying. They're saying, what did we, I mean, we did all this stuff for you. Like we, we cast out devils. We, we were teaching the Bible. We did many wonderful works. I mean, look at all of our wonderful works, God. Look at how amazing we are. And he's going to say, I never knew you. You're a sinner. You're a sinner. You want to be judged by your works? Okay, let's open the books. Take a seat. Let, let me judge you by your works, and let's see how you, let's see how that pans out for you. Oh, oh, you told a lie when you were four. Well, I get case closed. I guess that's it. That's done deal right there, buddy. You're a sinner. You work iniquity. I was four years old and told one lie. Is that really okay? Well, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, they're being they're, He's calling them workers of iniquity because of the fact that they have not had their sins forgiven. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And because they have not accepted the, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, they're going to have to suffer and pay the penalty for their own sin because they have denied that the Holy One paid the penalty for them. So, it says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And then he, then he goes on, and he goes on. But, anyway... And obviously, when he says, heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, he's referring to the entire chapter, because up here, he's talking about, you know, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, judge not that you be not judged. He's talking about everything here. But then, um, he goes on about that. So anyway, I don't think there's any more to talk about. So, um, for, it's just, um, it's very alarming that lies of the devil is, is um posting these and supporting these kind of ministries people who outright say that Jesus is not God people who are outright saying that you cannot go to heaven if you're living a life of sin things like that uh that makes me doubt lies of the devil now i don't know if he would like to speak to me Personally, I can make this video private. Um, I, I'm not in the mood for a YouTube war or anything like that. My goal is to just let people know that uh, the ministry of lies of the devil is supporting false prophets. And if lies of the devil is just confused or deceived about this, he needs to get right. And he's more than welcome to call me, and we can talk about the gospel personally, and then I'll delete the video, you know. Um, but as it stands right now, he is still, uh, as of four days ago, supporting Antichrist preachers that are flat out saying that Jesus is not God. Uh, in fact, I even, I commented to him on this. I don't want, I don't want to hear that dude's mouth. Please. Hello, everybody. Please, God bless you today. This um, is Solomon Rodman. So yeah, New I responded to him. IFB, I'll just call it. Uh, just please stop talking. So there you have it, folks. Um, hopefully, you know, something good comes of this. But as it stands now, I do stand in doubt of this guy's salvation. So look out for that evangelist video. It is coming soon. And God bless.